the risk factor for developing carcinoma breast are hormonal and non-hormonal. Increased estrogen exposure by early menarche, late menopause, obesity and hormonal replacement therapy pose a risk. However, it is protective to have long lactational periods and exercise. Non-hormonal risk factors are radiation exposure, alcohol consumption and increased dietary fat. Screening mammography is done for those women who are more than 50 years of age. It is doubtful to do screening mammography in women who are less than 50 years of age because the breasts are usually dense and they could be false positives or wrong interpretation and younger women are less likely to have carcinoma of the breast. Tamoxifen is used for the chemo prevention of carcinoma of the breast but it does have the side effects of increased risk of endometrial carcinoma, deep penis thrombosis, adverse vasomotor phenomenon and cataracts. A prophylactic mastectomy removes the breast tissue but not all of it and there is a poor quality of life after the mastectomy. BRCA1 and 2 are tumor suppressor genes which are expressed in an autosomal dominant fashion. Loss of both alleles is required for the initiation of breast cancer. Carcinomas associated with the BRCA1 gene mutation are usually invasive ductal carcinomas. They are seen in early age groups, bilateral, poorly differentiated. By immunohistochemistry, they are ER, PR and Herceptin receptor negative and usually associated with malignancies of the ovary, prostate and colon. Since these tumors don't express hormone receptors, chemo prevention is not useful. BRCA2 gene mutation in males increases the risk of CA breast to 6%, 10 times more than usual. In females, carcinomas associated with BRCA2 gene mutations are well differentiated invasive ductal carcinomas which are bilateral. They are triple hormone receptor positive and they are associated with carcinomas of ovary, prostate, colon, stomach, pancreas and gallbladder. To reduce the risk of carcinoma breast in those affected by BRCA1 and 2 gene mutations, one can offer bilateral prophylactic mastectomy. But remember that this does not remove all the breast tissue and one must avoid hormonal replacement in these patients. Bilateral salpingo oophorectomy is also offered but the quality of life is reduced. Surveillance for breast cancer is done by clinical breast examination every six months and screening mammography once annually after the age of 25. Chemo prevention with tamoxifen is useful only in those cases which are ER positive. Ultrasound of the breast is used to resolve equivocal mammographic lesions. It is also used to define cystic lesions, to demonstrate the quality of solid lesions and in intervention radiology to guide biopsies. If the physical examination and mammography is negative, MRI has a very low probability to detect a lesion. MRI is used to diagnose carcinoma in high risk patients, to find an unknown primary in lymph node positive patients, to assess the response of the patient to new adjuvant therapy. It is used to select a breast for partial irradiation and also to assess a recurrence in a treated breast. The best biopsy is an excisional biopsy, but for a palpable lesion, clinically, TrueCut is the first option followed by FNAC. For a non-palpable lesion, 100% accurate diagnosis can be achieved by TrueCut biopsy using ultrasound, mammography and stereotactic techniques. If the tumor has two hormone receptors positive, there is a 50% response to endocrine therapy. If only one receptor is positive, there is a 33% response to endocrine therapy. If the hormone receptors are negative, there is only a 10% response to endocrine therapy. Perceptin 2 promotes growth and proliferation of the malignancy. It also increases invasiveness and metastasis. Thus, it is a very important prognostic and predictive factor. Patients who overexpress HER2 have poorly differentiated carcinomas with high proliferation rates positive lymph nodes, decreased hormone receptor expression and increased risk of recurrence. Thus the routine testing 
is needed in all invasive carcinomas. If the patient is having HER2 positive, one should start anti-HER2 new therapy using trastuzumab, which is also Herceptin. It is a recombinant humanized monoclonal antibody directed against the HER2 new receptor. Compared to a patient who gets chemotherapy alone, a combination chemotherapy with Herceptin has a 40 to 50 percent reduction in the risk of recurrence and a 33 percent reduction in mortality due to carcinoma breast. Proliferating cell nuclear antigen or PCNA is a nuclear protein associated with DNA polymerase. Its expression increases in growth and synthesis phase of mitosis. This outlines the proliferating compartment of the breast. Angiogenesis is necessary for growth and invasiveness. It promotes cancer progression by delivery of oxygen and nutrients. It also promotes growth cytokine secretion by the endothelial cells. BCL2 inhibits apoptosis, whereas BAX is a death signal protein. A high BCL2 ratio would mean high-grade malignancies having axillary lymph node metastasis and reduced survival, whereas a reduced BAX would mean axillary lymph node metastasis and poor response to chemotherapy with reduced survival. The fun facts are that although there are a wide variety of biomarkers, they do not improve the accuracy to assess the prognosis and they can't predict the response to therapy. Therefore, the biomarkers used clinically are the ERPR receptors and the HER receptor.